Hello sailors. I'm Captain Tom Tersey from the Maryland School of Sailing and Seamanship in Rock Hall, Maryland. I have a question to ask. How accurate are the speed and distance instruments on your boat? For this I'm talking about the little spinner projecting out the bottom of your boat that registers speed and distance on your instrument panel. You can of course download the calibration adjusting procedures from the manufacturer's website but what do you adjust it to? What numbers do you use? Is it reading 10% high or maybe 20% low? You really don't know unless you measure its accuracy. And I'll describe here a simple procedure for measuring that accuracy. That little spinner wheel is measuring speed and distance that your boat has traveled relative to the water. It is not measuring relative to the ground, the mud below the water which is what the GPS measures. And speed and distance traveled relative to the water are essential pieces of information needed for computing dead reckoning, running fixes, current vectors, course to steer, estimated time of arrival, and more. The basic steps of the calibration procedure are as follows. One, select a measured course between two fixed objects or nav aids that lays perpendicular to the current flow. Do not use floating buoys which can be considerably off station. Use fixed piers, pilings, bridges, range markers, or the like. Two, use a measured distance of a half mile or more between the two fixed objects that you can identify on the chart. Accurately measure on the chart the distance over ground between the two fixed objects. Or, if you are using two nav aids, Calculate the distance between them using this site and their latitude and longitude positions from the U.S. Coast Guard light list. Three, motor at constant engine speed in one direction over the measured distance and precisely measure elapsed time. During this run, read the average water speed indicated on the boat's water speed instrument, not the GPS speed. Four, Run the course in the return direction at the same engine speed and again precisely measure elapsed time and indicated water speed. 5. Compute speed over ground for each direction by dividing distance over ground by the elapsed time. 6. Compute the speed correction factor for each direction by dividing speed over ground by the indicated speed. 7. Compute the average speed factor by adding the two speed factors together and dividing the sum by 2. 8. The distance correction factor will be the same number as the speed correction factor since most present day speed and distance instruments use the same type of spinner and both factors are therefore subject to the same amount of error. 9. These numbers will tell you the amount that your water speed and distance instruments are in error. If your instrument instruction book gives a calibration procedure, you can make adjustments and recheck by rerunning the course. Otherwise, you can simply apply these correction factors to future water speed and distance measurements. 10. As an alternative to using water speed for this calibration, you could use the boat's water distance measurement if your instrument indicates distance in nautical miles to at least one decimal place as needed for accuracy. We do this calibration during all of our Delmarva circumnavigation cruises and following is a summary of the numbers from one of these cruises. In October 2020 aboard sailing vessel Navigator our Island Packet 40 sailing yacht. The speed sensor mounted in the hull underwater measures the speed of the water passing by, interprets this as boat speed through the water, and the electronics display this information as indicated boat speed in nautical miles per hour. It can also be converted by the electronics to indicate distance during a given time period. We made the speed calibration run in Chester River between the Green Over Red Channel Junction Light LC and the Green Dayboard G1. 
The outbound leg was from LC to G1 and the return leg was from G1 to LC. The bearing between them for the outbound direction is 276 degrees true and the return direction is 096 degrees true. These courses are at roughly right angles to the current flow intended to minimize the effects of current on the calibration results. The measured distance between these nav aids is 6 tenths of a nautical mile. We converted these true directions for each course leg to compass degrees for steering by the helmsman as shown. The magnetic variation of 12 degrees west was looked up on a local chart. This 12 degrees was added to the true direction of 276 degrees to give the magnetic direction of 288 degrees. The deviation for navigator's compass was looked up in the deviation table shown in our YouTube video titled Compass Calibration the Easy Way. And this was 3 east giving a compass heading of 285 degrees that the helmsman needed to maintain to stay on track from light LC to dayboard G1. And similar calculations were made to determine the return compass heading of 106 degrees. Procedures for these TVMDC conversions are shown in detail in our YouTube video titled TVMDC Rules. We ran the engine at 2400 RPM giving us an indicated boat speed of 7.6 knots for the outbound leg and 7.2 knots for the return leg. I was at the helm. Mike marked the elapsed time for each run. JP was lookout for other boats. And Jerry called out to me to come right or come left to stay on track to the destination mark as my eyes were paying close attention to the compass course and the boat speed fluctuations. Note the following definitions that will be used in the calculations to follow. SIO and SIR refer to the speed indicated on your instrument panel based on the underwater spinner for the outbound and return legs respectively. DIO and DIR refer to the distance indicated on your instrument panel based on the underwater spinner for the outbound and return legs, respectively. DOG refers to the distance between the nav aids as measured on the chart, which applies to both the outbound and return legs. TO and TR refer to the measured time intervals for completing the outbound and return legs, respectively. SOGO and SOGR refer to the speed over ground calculated by dividing the distance over ground by the elapsed time, TO and TR, for the outbound and return legs, respectively. SFO and SFR refer to the speed correction factor calculated from the observed data for the outbound and return legs, respectively. SF refers to the average speed correction factor calculated by adding SFO and SFR together and dividing the result by 2. DFO and DFR refer to the distance correction factor calculated from the observed data for the outbound and return legs, respectively. DF refers to the average distance correction factor calculated by adding DFO and DFR together and dividing the result by 2. Observed data and calculations for this run were as follows. Outbound indicated boat speed through the water, SIO, was 7.6 knots. Outbound elapsed time, TO, was clocked at 5 minutes and 34 seconds which converts to 0.093 hours. Speed over ground, SOGO, was calculated by dividing the distance measured over ground from the chart, DOG, by the elapsed time, TO, and this equals 0.6 nautical miles divided by 0.093 
hours, which equals 6.47 knots. The outbound speed factor, SFO, was calculated by dividing the speed over ground, SOGO, by the indicated boat speed through the water, SIO, and this equals 6.47 knots divided by 7.6 knots, which gives the speed correction factor of 0.85 for the outbound leg. Similar calculations were made for the return trip. The return speed factor, SFR, was 0.86. The average speed factor, SF, equals the sum of SFO and SFR divided by 2, which equals 0.855. In the future, calculate corrected boat speed through the water by multiplying the indicated speed through the water, SI, by the speed factor, and note that SI is not GPS speed. Also, since distance traveled in a given period of time equals speed divided by time, and since both speed and distance are measured by the same spinner in contact with the water, the calibration factors for both speed and distance are numerically equal so that the distance factor, DF, equals the speed factor, SF, which equals 0.855. In the future, calculate the corrected distance through the water by multiplying the indicated distance through the water, di, by the distance factor, and note that di is not GPS distance. We ran this calibration during four subsequent cruises aboard Navigator with different crew members, and results were fairly consistent with correction factors ranging from 0.85 to 0.88 for all five tests. So I think that the procedure is valid. Also, when later applying the correction factor to DR plots and running fixes, results were more consistent than when no correction factor was used. Well, I'm out of breath now going through all of that, so I hope you followed. I hope you find this technique useful for your future sailing and navigation activities, and happy sailing, and thank you for participating.